we have Terry Jenkins here from the local chapter of the American Red Cross to talk to us a little bit about disaster relief, especially after the storms we've had here. Um, Terry, you guys cover a large area. Um, about how many people did you guys serve over the last week or so with the storm coming through about Austin Lowndes County? Hi, Marcus. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, our chapter covers 20 counties, so technically we serve a population of 445,000 every day. That's, that's what we do. But however, during Hurricane Hermine, uh, we sheltered 236 people. We had three shelters open in uh, three of our cities in Valdosta, Waycross, and Douglas, with a total of 236 people that stayed uh, Thursday night in the shelters. That's awesome. Um, obviously, people needed a place to stay. Yes. Um, uh, when a storm like this hits our area, um, what are some of the steps, you know, after it's done, or even before, what are some of the steps that the Red Cross says that we all need to do to prepare and then afterwards what do we need to do? Well what the Red Cross strives to do is to educate the community on how they can be prepared before the disaster hits and so we send out multiple um, press releases, we submit information through our Facebook page, um, through the media, on uh, downloading our hurricane apps. Um, I really like to promote the apps uh, because they really do track weather in real time. We work with the emergency management directors on um, presenting a unified message to the community so everybody will hear the same information at the same time mm -hmm. and with the public information officers. And so uh, it's just, you know, check things in your home, make sure you have enough water per person, you know, for the, the number of people in your family, uh, check the batteries in your flashlight, you know, the radio, have your NOAA weather radio you know, up to speed. And there's a lot of different things and we have information on our website and Facebook page with a hurricane safety checklist that people can look at and say, hey, this is what I need at my home. Okay, awesome, cool. Um, is, are, is there anything that s citizens can do um, after a storm has happened? You know, it, what can they do to aid you guys? Well, um, a lot of people reached out during the uh, hurricane last week to um, help us mm -hmm. and we appreciated that and so those are what we call spontaneous volunteers so we are looking for volunteers to help us on that day-to-day -day response that we have with our single-family home fires um, however in a situation like this uh, we did accept help and uh, in the shelters um, people donated food and um, their time you know but money for disaster relief is really the primary way that people can uh, help us mm -hmm. and uh, anything that goes to disaster relief will service the community that we serve and help those that were displaced and lose everything whether or not it was from the hurricane or f fires. Okay. And that's something that we can do year round. Yes, year round. Disaster is year round and so we try to distribute that information and say hey this is what we need, this is how you can help. Red Cross is looking for volunteers, uh, monetary support, uh, sponsors for our events that we have throughout the year and just uh, offering community partnerships mm -hmm. to companies in the way that they can keep the employees at their business safe and educated mm -hmm. and prepared and uh, for the, and then distribute that information to their family and friends. Okay. Now, obviously this has been a crazy time for you guys here. You had the floods in Louisiana mm -hmm. recently. And then we had the hurricane come through North Florida, South Georgia. Uh, how do you guys serve everyone when you have multiple things like that going on. It's the power of the volunteers and that leads back to our mission statement. Without the power of volunteers and the generosity of donors, it would be hard pressed for the Red Cross to do what we do every day and delivering that mission. Uh, when we got the word about Louisiana on August 14th, everybody just sprung into action and since that time over 4,000 Red Cross staff and volunteers deployed to Louisiana. Volunteers from every state in the country went to Baton Rouge area and uh, some including from including our area. Yes, um, including uh, Hannah Carroll and Peppy Nelson. Peppy is still currently there. And um, so we hear stories of what they did, you know, providing mass care, um, feeding, uh, IT, logistics. And so there's a little bit of everything that the volunteers do. They're assigned to a specific area, but then they can kind of branch out into other areas. So uh, we were proud of the volunteers that stepped up and were able to and willing to go. And so that's an opportunity to anybody out there listening that can help us volunteer on a day-to-day -day 
or either on a state uh, operation or a national operation like Louisiana. But originally more than 10,000 600 people were forced into wow. the shelters, but as of a couple of nights ago, there were still nearly a thousand that were in shelters. So going on in four weeks now, there's still a great need for um, assistance with the Louisiana flooding operation. Okay. Awesome. Um, now, obviously, we talked about you know here in Valdosta the floods. Is there anything else that you need people to know about disaster relief and how they can get involved? Uh, the Red Cross, we, we welcome anybody that is interested in volunteering. Uh, there's every, all the training is free uh, for anybody that's wishing to volunteer. Um, we have an event coming up on September 15th uh, where a community ride fundraiser is taking place. Uh, we're going to be set up at different locations in town and everybody has the opportunity to come donate some funds toward the Louisiana effort. Louisiana is part of our division, Division 5 of Red Cross, and so we are stepping up to help you know, our sister region uh, in everything that they have suffered recently. Um, follow our Facebook page, South Georgia Chapter, look on our website, call the operations office located here in Valdosta, and you know, to find out that number is 229-242-7404. Okay. Uh, I want to thank you for taking out your busy, busy schedule and sitting down and talking to us. But this is important information that we want all of our citizens to know, and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.